Hey everyone, in light of the pandemic, we're practicing responsible social distancing and working from home. We'll be releasing a few special episodes over the coming weeks to help you get through these crazy times. Stay safe and thanks for listening. I caught up with Stacey Hamer from IQ Metrics for this two-part episode. She handles all things customer facing at IQ, so she's perfectly positioned to comment on the current and future state of wireless retail. Hope you enjoy our conversation. Stacey Hamer, Welcome aboard, VP of Client Experience at IQ Metrics, uh, one of the biggest point of sale providers for for wireless retail in North America. So, Stacy, tell us what IQ Metrics does and and what you do there. Sure, thank you. Um, so, what we do is we provide retail management systems and products, typically to wireless retailers to run their business um, in any channel they basically engage with a customer on. And I, like you said, I'm their VP of client experiences. So I'm responsible for any interaction a client has with IQ Metrics, whether that's uh, the teams that do our account management, support, launch, or project management. If you talk to us, it's probably one of my teams. So you're right in the thick of things right now with with what's happening in wireless retail in both Canada and the U.S. Um, you know, what's what was happening in wireless retail before all of this? And we can get into what's happening in kind of today's state. Yeah, um, it feels like this has been current state for way longer than it has been. So even thinking back to what it was like a few <laughs> weeks ago, a month ago, feels like I got to go way back. Um, <laughs> but before we were, you know, hit with all the COVID changes, we were really seeing wireless retailers, this huge trend didn't matter, you know, you were a small dealer or a large dealer, people were really focused on operational efficiencies. So we weren't seeing people as focused on generating new business, but it was more, how do I just become a better, more efficient retailer? So focusing on their back office or uh, even their sales process, but it was to make things more efficient. Um, And we were starting to see people starting to realize they had to figure out uh, some type of online presence, but it was still not the norm yet. Um, But we were certainly seeing people, you know, asking a lot of questions, being a little interested, but not ready to pull the trigger on anything quite yet. And so do you think all of that has been accelerated as a result of last three, four weeks? Drastically. Yeah, <laughs> drastically. And so, so what are you, what are you seeing? So, retail has completely done a, a one eighty in the last three four weeks. What kind of challenges are you hearing from from your customers, and how are they uh, reacting to it? Yeah, I. It's obviously the things you'd expect. Um, we've seen a lot of challenges just with people, obviously being able to stay open, uh, and those are you know the things everyone knows. You know, either the state um, or province has mandated something or the carrier has pushed for doors to be shut. Um, Even in states or provinces where, you know, non-essential retail is forced to shut down, even though telecommunications is considered essential, what we're seeing is virtually any store that's in a mall, when the rest of the mall shuts down around you, uh, you're not going to get any foot traffic. So most people are making just the decision themselves to close those stores, um, even though they're not mandated to, they're essentially mandated to. There's no one walking in the stores and they just can't justify it. Um, We've seen, you know, across the board, virtually every retailer adjust their hours. They're opening later, they're closing earlier. Um, That's of course has so many impacts for them with customers and foot traffic. Um, And with that staffing has just become a massive problem. It's not even just the lack of sales or people physically showing up to the stores. It's, you know, do the staff feel mm-hmm. comfortable being in the stores and working? So, you know, I just chatted with someone yesterday who said, you know, they had over a hundred stores and they had a, a one store to one staff member ratio. So if that staff member couldn't come to work, the store just didn't open. It's that it can be that drastic depending on kind of where the stores are located. So staffing has certainly been, you know, massive challenge. And then foot traffic, you know, no different than any other retailer. It's just at an all time low. Um, We saw, oh, go ahead. No, sorry, keep going. going. I was gonna say, the only thing I found very interesting is when this first happened, we actually saw a spike in sales in many, many 
retailers because when people were anticipating being, you know, in their homes for quite some time, people rushed <clears throat> to the stores to upgrade their phones and buy accessories. So there was this weird short lived byproduct of a, a spike in sales before everything kind of slowed it way down. That's, that's crazy. I, I know it's speaking to some of our customers, March was one of their best months ever. Yeah. Um, over the, like the dealers have been open or carriers have been open for a long time. March was one of their best months ever. So it's, it's kind of a shocking peak and then they're right down into a valley in, in April. Yep. So how have, how have those customers reacted knowing, you know, their staffing challenges, a bunch of their stores have closed. I think you mentioned a stat that, you know, more than 60% of stores in Canada are closed and about 40% in the U S how have, how have your customers reacted to that? Yeah, very mixed. Um, I think for the first week or two, it was way more deer in headlights, kind of panic. They didn't know what yep. to do besides just try to survive. Um, we've definitely seen a big shift in the last one to two weeks, though, where people are really looking to embrace, you know, whatever they need to embrace to stay relevant. So some some things that never, ever existed in wireless, like curbside pickup is a good example. Um, you know, you saw this rush of restaurants mm -hmm. doing it, hugely successful, um, something that's never existed in the wireless space before. And now I could name dozens and dozens of retailers who have put up posters, uh, social media um, all over their website, you know, buy something online yep. and we'll bring it out to your car. So I, we've seen people really start to adapt to new trends and they're jumping on that really quickly, which I think has been really cool to see how quick they're shifting. And have, have your your customers started to shift more digital or omni as a result of their stores being closed? Yep, hugely. So before <laughs> all of this, um, like I was saying earlier, you know, we'd have people ask us a lot of questions on, you know, what it looks like to get an online presence. You know, they're interested, but they're not sure. And all of those people have quickly changed their minds. Everyone's interested, so we can't keep up right now with the quantity of you know, inquiries and how quick yep. people want to do. Um, what I also love is that they're actually trying to use um, staff that historically would be working in their store or corporate office, and they're trying to reposition them to focus on omnichannel sales. So huge upswing in dropship and people trying to call customers, follow up with them, and then just ship them products directly and not even needing that retail front to service the customer. And some people are doing it quite successfully. Yeah, we've we've had a lot of examples where uh, where our customers are still doing the customer outreach, you know, through texting, through phone calls, just checking on their customers. But this shift in terms of where does the purchase happen? The whole intent of that customer outreach is really changing. And it's, you know, who would have thought that curbside pickup would even be a thing in telco I know. a month ago? Like that to me was unheard of. And then all of a sudden we're talking to our customers, we're having different dialogue on how to help their business. And all of a sudden curbside pickup has become a new phrase or term within, within telco, which yeah. is crazy. Um, <laughs> totally and then, agree. Yeah, the, oh, and then Omni and then, you know, dropship has probably been a more so dropship has been huge because you have less touches. You're able to to get the product to your customers as, as quickly as possible. Exactly right. That's cool. We've seen um, um, any... an, another big shift with um, appointments as well. So that was another thing that, you know, just <clears throat> caught on fire as soon as any of this happened. People couldn't, you know, adopt that functionality fast enough to try to, you know, reach out to their customers and either set up a time to talk to them on the phone or set up a time for them to actually come in the store and prepare the store in a nice safe way for the customer. But that's been another huge thing that kind of came out of nowhere um, for us where, you know, people were always interested, but not, not as quick to adapt. And that's been really cool. We've seen some really good success stories with that as well. Yeah, and it's it's funny to think some of the stuff that that Staffload does or IQ does, you know, there some of it was nice to have, really cool idea, but not crucial to my business, like appointment booking. And now all of a sudden, it's it's critical to their business. Dropship, same thing, is probably critical to their business as they get through this, and just that regular customer reach is, is important. So it's 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 an interesting dynamic, and I'm wondering what I'm bouncing around a little bit, but I'm wondering what your you view is of how much of that will stick 
in the new normal, whatever that new normal is? You know, I actually think a lot of these new emerging trends are going to stick going forward. I think, you know, the reality is we're not just going to go back to how business was before. Not wireless industry, no industry is. Um, it's going to change how consumers engage with brands and retailers. It's going to, you know, it's going to change everything that we we know. So I think that retailers, especially wireless retailers, shouldn't view these things as this is just a Band-Aid solution or a short-term thing for us to focus on. You know, maybe it was initially, but it should be <clears throat> brought into, you know, future planning because these things are going to stick around. And so any examples of, of any of customers, dealers, carriers, whether they're your customers or just things yeah. you've seen in telco space, anything that's been done really, really well in responding to all of this? You know, one carrier who happens to be a client of ours um, who I think has really adapted very quickly is Bluegrass. Um, they're out of Kentucky, and they they have their own corporate stores. They also have dealer stores. They have done an absolutely phenomenal job with engaging their customers online with appointments and with their outreach programs. Um, they have probably done one of the best jobs that I've been privy to seeing the details of, um, and they've had a, a tremendous success with that. I think there are some carriers, I know you were mentioning TELUS in Canada. Um, you know, there's some carriers who are really stepping up to do things. And then, you know, I don't know if I could name specific dealers that I think are doing really well, because I honestly, I think there are just so many of them right now yep. doing well, um, like really, really well. Like they're just, they've got positive attitudes. They're, you know, they're implementing changes so, so quickly and they're doing it successfully and they're tweaking this, you know, the programs as they need to. So I think, you know, there's a lot of good success stories happening out there right now. And and do you think it's, you know, you talk about dealers, their positive attitude, is it because they're focused more future state versus crap, I have a really big problem today. Is it, Do you think that's a big part of it? They're really working on the, on the future state and their goal versus yeah. the sideshow that is today? <laughs> I do. I think there's certainly some people who are still focused on the, you know, I need to do everything to stay around and keep my business alive, which is completely fair. Uh, but then I think there are some people who are realizing this is not a short lived thing. Uh, and then this is my point to adapt my business so that, you know, when things do start turning around, that, you know, I'm well prepared to continue to serve the customers in this new way they're going to expect. And my staff are going to be ready for that. And, you know, it should be a more seamless transition back to whatever the new norm will be. Um, but I definitely think there are uh, some great examples of retailers who are setting themselves up to be really successful in the future. That's cool. Yeah. And just tying back to the bluegrass thing, they've been really uh, open about what their strategy is. I was on their website a couple of weeks ago and I was, I was thoroughly impressed with them clearly articulating what exactly they're doing, whether it's, you know, curbside pickup, uh, appointment booking to come into store to get their phone fixed, whatever it might be, how they're leveraging their call centers. It, it really, I think it is probably one of the best communicated plans to their customers as well. Yeah, great point. Yep, absolutely. Fast switching to future state, you know, as we talked about a few times, we're all on a lot of folks are in execution mode. You talked about, you know, some of the better ones are, are past the execution mode and focused on the on the future. Uh, lights go back on. People aren't isolating anymore. What are the things that, that retailers, specifically wireless retailers, need to do to be ready to go? You know, like, like I've said it a couple times, I think first is people have to be ready to not be under the assumption we're going back to exactly how it was before. Um, I think there will be you know, aspects that will go back. And I think there are new norms that, you know, they've got to be ready for. I think one of the things that I've, you know, always loved about wireless is how tight knit of a community we are, whether it's, you know, dealer to dealer, all us, you know, partners and vendors, uh, we're all really close and we're all looking to do what's right for wireless retail. So I would encourage the dealers to talk to their peers um, because we're going to be at an you know, a point of, well, 
what's happening in your market or with your carrier or your set of stores. What are you doing that's differently? And sharing with each other right now, I think, is going to be really important. So I think, you know, working your network and uh, keeping in touch with people on what's working sure. is going to be super important. Um, and I think getting ahead of things will be really important. Um, one of the things I know is one of the biggest challenges right now that is going to be likely one of the biggest challenges going forward will be uh, workforce optimization. Um, if you've had to shut stores and lay off staff, how are you preparing to bring staff back on? Um, and how, you know, you know, how are you going to bring those people back on in a confident uh, and quick way? So I think getting ready for uh, staffing is going to be probably one of the biggest issues people are going to struggle with going forward. Uh, and then the, the last thing, like I've mentioned a couple times already, too, is just this expectation of what consumers are going to want going forward uh, isn't going to be as much of the traditional brick and mortar experience. Um, we've just fast tracked, you know, consumers expecting and, you know, feeling comfortable with buying phones and uh, all of the things that go with it online and having it shipped directly to them um, or, you know, buying online, picking up in store or walking into a store and having something shipped to them. So, you know, we've been talking about omnichannel for, you know, many years, but now is really where, you know, if you're not implementing these things, you're potentially going to hurt a little bit going forward. So we got to get some good plans in place to bring all of those mm -hmm. channels to the table. For sure. I, I saw something a couple weeks ago where it was talking about what accelerated uh, companies did just strategy the most. I had like option A is CEO, option B is CMO, and then option C was COVID. And it was like COVID circled a great big, big red marker. <laughs> and it was, it's funny. I think that's really what's happened for a lot of retailers yeah. is this is accelerated a digital strategy that probably should have been there two, three years ago, but it's it's really pushed that to the front front of, of any of their strategies and, and priorities. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you talk about, you know, having a really strong digital. People are buying differently, will are buying differently today than they were a month ago. You expect a lot of that to stay the same. You know, a lot of a lot of your customers are in small communities. They are the face of their carrier, their brand saying, hey, that Verizon or AT&T store at the corner of Fifth and Main, that's my go-to store or the Joanne at that store is awesome. She's she's my person. Do you think there's going to be a shift more to localization where people are really buying from almost really supporting small business or their their local community a lot more than they may have in the past? That is such a good question. Um, I absolutely think that. Um, I think one silver lining that has come out of all of this COVID stuff is how important local businesses are. And I think what a lot of people struggle with, especially in wireless, is you don't get to be typically represented as a local business. You're under the brand. So a lot of people may jump to conclusions on, you know, your, you know, a Verizon or just AT&T or just TELUS or whomever, and they don't realize that it's actually a small dealer. I think people in smaller communities likely are going to be at, at an advantage for that because they probably have a better brand locally uh, than some yeah. others do. And I think that will be more important than ever for sure. And I think what will be potentially exciting for those people is uh, the trust and loyalty they have with their customers and how they're likely already working with a more loyal customer base than others potentially. So implementing things like dropship or a website with appointments or things like that, mm -hmm. you already have such a good customer base to lean on and grow that out with. But I, I certainly think it's very important for people to be positioning themselves as a local business right now because it will definitely play into the future. Yeah, and that's that's part of why I was asking questions. A bit of a leading question that I, I'm I'm a firm believer that, that is going to happen over the coming months and years is that it it really becomes, you know, who is my my person, who's my barber, who's my go to clothing yeah. store or whatever person that sells me winter tires for those that live in 
winter climates. And I think that's that's going to continue to evolve um, over time, um, even more so now. So I think yep. part of the the retailers or the folks can really capitalize on a where are customers wanting to buy, but b that they are that local presence will probably set them up really well in the future. Yep, absolutely. I mean, okay. the only thing I the only thing I'd add to how I think consumers are going to react to this is, you know, we we've been talking about what do retailers need to do, but I'll tell you, I mean, all of us included as the consumer. We have just yep. fast tracked what we expect out of people, right? You know, over the top personal experiences, you know, um, curbside pickup is, I don't think that's going to go away in wireless. You know, I, I think that's going to be something we're going to have to figure out the balance of it and how it will physically be possible when everything's up and running again. But the consumer expectation, it was already, you know, changing so quickly before all of this. Uh, I think the consumer expectation will drive, obviously, all of the business side, but it's changing quick. For sure. It, I'll bounce back, bounce around a little bit. You know, at IQ Metrics, you're you're one of the more senior folks at IQ. How have you um, balanced that fine line of make sure your company's still viable, yet make sure, you know, your customers are well taken care of? Yeah, it's – that's a – Great question. It's been a hard one to uh, come up with the right balance for us. Um, so we've done a few things. Um, we, of course, um, similar to what, you know, Statflow is doing, which I think is awesome. Um, we did a couple quick webinars, trainings, blogs, um, just some quick little wins people can, you know, use to get through these times. Um, we offered um, a whole bunch of new products. We waived all of the fees on them for a few months, things like dropship and appointments, um, MyRQ, and we're offering uh, custom database work to people. So we did all of that. I think one of the biggest things we've done where we've seen a lot of success is um, when we had to cancel our boot camp that was supposed to be happening in Minneapolis in a couple of weeks, we moved it to an online virtual event and we've had over 300 uh, percent jump in registrations by doing that. So we are almost out of capacity for the tool that we use. And that's been a great thing for us uh, to be able to see how many people are interested in learning. And it gives me actually a lot of you know, excitement and hope for the future because these people aren't just giving up on the fact you know, that things aren't going to turn around, we're seeing a rush of people coming to us to say, I want to learn all the things I need to learn so that I can be really ready uh, for when things turn around. So that's been pretty exciting for us. But man, it's been really, um, it's been it's been tough watching the retailers go through this. So anything that we can do from an expertise side, we are we're really trying to fill in as much as we can for them. That's awesome. And it, there's a massive appetite to learn right now, which is, I think, is once we all get through this and there will be an end to it, uh, we'll come out the other side. I think there's such a, a, a hunger for learning and sharing best practices. I think as an overall economy, country, et cetera, I think we'll be in a much better spot. I think of past challenges with the economy or different macro socioeconomic stuff, there's usually some of the best ideas come out of these crazy times. So it's cool that the dealers, your customers are still so hungry to learn and, and wanting to attend some of your events. Yeah, totally agree.